able to buy groceries with the scan of a part of our body. Tell me more, please. <laughs> yes. So here's the deal. Amazon is reportedly testing body scan payment technology. This kind of creeps me out a little bit. According to the New York Post, the e-commerce giant is trying out the system called Orvo, which uses biometric technology. The way it works, as it stands, is Amazon Prime users would scan their hand to ring up a purchase instead of a card. The goal is to roll it out at Whole Foods by the beginning of next year. Dina? Okay, this, I have so many concerns mm -hmm. because that means then your I know, fingerprints I know. are out there. Yep, mm -hmm. not just your finger. And I mean, like, what if you just wave and now you have a whole <laughs> roll of cereal, you know, I that mean, you just bought? Why not right? just put microchips in our arms and we that, just well, bump up I next know. to anything? Just, that's what bought. Why not right? just put microchips in our arms and that, we just well, bump up I next know. to anything? Just, that's where we're headed. That uh -huh. is the thing. I'm with you, Dina, because, like, as soon as you're like, oh, it's okay to, like, use yeah, my no. hand and then. Next we got a chip. We got a chip in our arm. Yeah, yeah. No. and then next we got a chip in our arm. Yeah, I know they're already doing that for some no, cars. No, no. So, how many of you here would have a microchip implanted in your hand, for instance, if it allowed you to do things like pay for your groceries or log onto your computer just by waving your hand? Anyone? Very soon, you may have the chance. I'm bigger concerned is that this could be done ultimately against people's will at some point in time. Look, we live in a very fragile society. Many people in Sweden are lining up, lining up to get these microchips that the country's main chipping company says that it can't even keep up with the number of requests. Really? What I in the no way I would do that. What in the Illuminati, Mark of the Beast, <laughs> witchcraft is going on over there in wow. Sweden? And Steve... This is happening here. I don't want to get biblical, but you know, I've heard about this Mark of the Beast business my whole life. I think it's true. Giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakadash. And those are the names of who the world calls God and Jesus Christ in the Hebrew language. I'd like to give double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, GMS. And salutations to the hopeful elect brethren out there pushing the word in sincerity and in truth. Risking their lives and they freedom to do so. And of course, to those men, I'd like to say peace and blessings upon you and the Holy Spirit. And in tonight's lesson, I want to go over an article entitled, End Times Being Fulfilled. The Federal Reserve and major banks launch a digital dollar. And you see, and, and when you read things about this, this lets you know that we're indeed living in the end times. Okay. Um. I previously read this article in the banks that they mentioned that paired with the Federal Reserve to launch this digital dollar. We're talking about major, major banks. OK, um, I believe that we're not living in the last days. I personally, for me, I believe that we're living in the the last seconds of the last days. You see, because once the mark of the beast, because this is right here, this is what this is going to do. This is going to usher in the mark of the beast without a shadow of a doubt. And with that being said, that leaves us with only two prophecies less. I mean, left after this is 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 a cast at abroad throughout the world. And those two prophecies are World War Three, the Third World's War, and the return of our Lord Hamashiach Yahushai. Okay, so we're living indeed in the end times, but within the end times, we're indeed living in the last seconds of the last days. And actually, before I read this article. I just want to grab the scripture right here because the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter, uh, emphasizes about that, right? And it starts off by reading Habakkuk 2 and 3. It says, for the vision, talking about the prophecies of the scripture, is yet for an appointed time. You see, it's just for an appointed time. A lot of people like to believe that uh, the Bible is a fairy tale, maybe. They like to believe that that is a, is a fictional book. Not knowing that it's the word of the Lord and actually the only thing that separate us from the future prophecies of the scripture from the reality that we live in currently is just time. Actually, the scripture uh, references that is just an appointed time. OK, so it's evident that it's going to happen. OK, because it does save the Lord. So for so it says for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, right. At the end, it shall speak and not lie. And though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall surely come, it will not tarry. All right, and this is talking about the words of the Lord, the prophecies of the scriptures. It will surely come 
It's not going to tarry. And this is what we're witnessing right now before our very eyes. Prophecy being fulfilled. End time prophecy being fulfilled. Okay. So this article starts off by reading uh, in a new. Let me see. Yep. It says is a new digital dollar, quote unquote, project from the Federal Reserve and several of the world's biggest banks. Another leap forward in biblical prophecy. And like I mentioned in the intro, it in, it indeed is. OK, this is another uh, uh, step towards fulfilling major prophecies of the scriptures. OK, actually, I want to read one more scripture just to let you know how close we are. To the second return of, of our Lord Hamashiach it was shy. Uh, in the book of James chapter 5 verse 7 it reads uh, Be patient therefore Brethren right we all have to be patient Right and to the coming Of the Lord Yahweh Shai Behold the husband man Waited for the precious fruit of the earth And the fruit that the Lord is Waiting for that precious fruit Is known as his elect A lot of the times when you read in the book of Revelation It refers to them as the elect The 144,000 and the remaining of the one third. This is who the husbandman, Yahweh Shai, is uh, waiting for, right? And he, and it says, and have long patience for it, for that fruit, also known as the first fruits, right? Until the until he received the early and the latter rain. And it says, be ye also patient, right? So we have to be patient, just like the Lord Yahweh Shai is patient. And it says, establish your hearts for the coming. Of the Lord draw off nigh. And what it means by draw off nigh is that when you read these things in, in the in the articles and the news events, it's it's letting you know that the return of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is very close. All right. So it draw off nigh, right? So it says, Is this another leap forward in biblical prophecy? And it says the Federal Reserve of New York, along with major lenders such as Bank of America, that's a huge bank, all right. I, I I forgot the percentage of a, of a uh, of of the people that have Bank of America, but it's a lot. It's a lot of people. It's a huge percentage of people that use this bank. All right. So Bank of America is in it with the creation of of this of this system, all right, this digital dollar backed by the Federal Reserve, right? Also another major one is HSBC, right? It says have launch have launched a pilot program. For a digital dollar that will test the use of such tokens in the U.S. banking system. And all this is being done because uh, with the elites of the society, the, the, the real rulers, the real government of the society, what they want is that they want a global reset. All right. They want a global reset and they want to get rid of this this petrol dollar. All right? They want to get rid of this this actual paper dollar a uh, dollar and they want it to be backed by a digital currency. Which, which is actually uh, not even real money because it's not going to be backed by anything. And they want you to be a perpetual slave, right? This is what they want. They want you to be a perpetual slave where you don't own anything, all right? And this is the new system that's in the making right before our very eyes. Here it is. You don't even have people owning ho homes, houses anymore. Everybody's what? Everybody's renting. They don't want you to own anything, all right? And this is what they believe, which is going to be the cure to the this uh, the current state of the economy. Just erase everything, have a global reset, and everybody use this digital dollar. Okay? So I'm going to read that again. It says, the Federal Reserve of New York, along with major lenders such as the Bank of America, HSBC, have launched a pilot program. Now, I mentioned it being a pilot program. A pilot program lets you know that the system is not in the making. But the system is already here because when you look at that word pilot. Right. Let's look up the word pilot. A pilot. Right. Is a person. Not that not that type of pilot. But look at this definition too. a pilot is a is a television program made by made. Oh, a television program made to test audience reaction with a view to the production of a series. All right. So a pilot program is nothing but a test. All right. And the reason why they're testing is because why? It's because the system is already here. It's already built. Right. 
And what they're about to do in these upcoming days is usher it into the masses of the people. OK, so this thing is not a fairy tale. It's not made up. Right. It's already here. Right. So they said they have launched a pilot program for a digital dollar that will test the use of such tokens in the U.S. making system under the project dubbed the regulated liability network U.S. pilot. The Fed's New York, uh, the Fed's New York Innovation Center, NYIC, will explore the feasibility of an interoperable network of digital currency banking, uh, digital central bank liabilities, and commercial bank digital money using distributed ledger technology. Okay, so the Fed and these major banks are pairing up together to launch. Uh, 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 the this a digital dollar backed by CBDCs, central uh, central bank digital currencies. All right, and it says, listen to this. It says, and you and utilizing the fundamentals, right, of cryptocurrencies known as blockchain. The pilot project will experiment with wholesale digital asset transactions and settlements, and involve City, that's another bank, Bank of America. BNY Mellon, HSBC, and payments. This is the, this is the one that shocked me. All right, and it says in the payment specialist Mastercard. This is the one that shocked me. And Swift, according to the Fed. Now, if you know anything about Swift, right? Uh, uh, loads. Well, I post a, a quick clip just explaining what uh, what uh, Swift does. But basically, what Swift handles is cross border payments between countries. All right, you can't have cross-border payments to a different country without the help of swift all right so with swift getting getting involved with this digital asset this digital currency is a huge 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 uh, uh, uh step it's a huge reality okay to let you know that this is not fake this is not uh, uh what's the word conspiracy theory this is real okay this is very real all right those who I play a quick clip about uh, explaining what SWIFT does. SWIFT, an acronym for the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications, is used by more than 11,000 banks in more than 200 countries to communicate financial transactions in an internationally standard way. SWIFT is not a money transfer system, but rather a sophisticated and encrypted messaging system expediting and facilitating transfers between banks, or in today's parlance, something akin to WhatsApp for financial transfers. If taken away, it could be crippling for banks and governments. The article continues by saying a blockchain technology for the project is being provided by SETL with digital assets powered by Amazon Web Services. And of course, Amazon Web Services is going to be uh, involved in this because with, with AWS, with the amount of storage that they have, uh, it's, they, they're going to need that amount of storage to, to, to power this. All right. Dealing with uh, Amazon's cloud and EC2 network and their uh, productivity. All right. You're going to need a, a storage network that's going to help back this. And who else could do it besides Amazon? All right. So Amazon is huge is is uh, hugely involved in this. OK. Now, actually, I want to get a word right here just to get familiar with this word, because this is what's going to happen in these upcoming days. You're going to have a lot of these tech firms basically rule the government that we that we know. OK. This is what's going to happen. All right. So a word that I want brothers to get familiar with is the word technocracy. All right. And what that word means, right, that word means as a name for a system, for a new system of government by te by technical experts. Right. So it's a, it's a form of government ruled by technical experts. Breaking down the word, you get techno, which means art, craft, skill, uh, techni, right, uh, art, skill, craft and work. But this is where you get the word uh, technology, right? Method, system, etc. But then you got the word uh, crisi, right? The word crisi means to rule or government, right? Power might rule, uh, power authority. Or you get another word you could say is control, all right? So you're going to have control based off of the technology, these different tech firms, all right? 
So all these different tech firms, all these different banks, they're in one with each other, creating this uh, uh, this beast system. All right. This new way of payment. All right. And the reason why this is so important, the reason why this is so important is because of Revelation, the 13th chapter, the mark of the beast has to be ushered in. But first, the way of payment that that system has to be set up. And then shortly after what's going to come after that, it's going to come the microchip. And within that microchip, of course, they're going to have uh, 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 the different ways of payment. OK, and this is all biblical prophecy. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 16. And it says, and he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. OK, and it doesn't matter your social status. It doesn't matter how much money you have in your pocket or in your bank account. The scripture says he's he talking about the elites of the society. This beast, right, is going to is going to cause all to receive that mark. That means if you're if you're a, a, a regular Joe Smo or if, or if you're famous or if you're your Jay-Z's or your Beyonce's, he doesn't care. He's going to allow all to receive that mark in their right hand. It's going to either go be on your right hand or on your forehead or it could be on your left hand. But nevertheless, he's going to cause you to receive that mark. All right. And dealing with the mark of the forehead, because you got a lot of people out there that believe. Got a lot of people out there believe that, you know, <laughs> there's no such thing as brain implementations. OK, but guess what your boy Elon Musk is doing? This is another article that came out not too long ago. Entitled right here, uh, Elon Musk expert. Uh, no, Elon Musk expects Neuralink brain chip to begin human trials within six months. And this was posted on December 1st. All right. So within six months from now, he want to start the first trial on humans to. Uh, 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 what's the word I want to look for to test, you know, his, his Neuralink uh, brain chip on. OK. This is what he want to do within the six months. So this is all backed by uh, what the scriptures are saying. What the Apostle John saw on the island of Patmos. He's seen these things, right? Almost 2,000 years ago. And it's happening right before our very eyes, right? So I'm going to keep reading. And it says, To receive a mark in their right hands or in their forehead that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, and let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, right? And the number, and his number is six hundred, three score and six. And when you look up the number, actually we could do it right now. When you look up that number six, dealing with the number six it always deals with a cutting, the cutting of the flesh. A lot of people don't know what that number six even means, the, the actual meaning of it, right? When you look up the word six, it goes back to the word right here. It goes back to the word sex. It goes back to the word sex. But what does sex mean? What does sex mean? Sex means... Um... Right here, bypass the uh, the relationship between males and females. But look at this definition right here. Which would which would connect it to secure. Shakar, secure. Forgive me if I said that wrong, but it means to what to divide or cut. All right. That's what the word sex means. And it goes back to six. It means what? to cut in order to receive that order to receive the mark of the beast it has to be the uh, uh the incision or the cutting of the flesh and that's what exactly what they do to um to insert that chip into they cut the flesh all right another thing that we could look up is the word mark the word mark goes back to the greek word karagma which means a stamp and printed mark, um, mark branded upon 
horses being carved. Car carving deals with uh, cutting. But look at the Strong's definition. Right? Let's look at the Strong's definition. Strong's definition says what? A scratch, an etching. An etching deals with a cutting. A scratch deals with a cutting. Right? A stamp. A badge of servitude. Right? So that's what that word marks deals with. It deals with the cutting of the flesh. And once you receive that mark, it proves that what? That you worship Satan. You worship the God of this world, which is Esau, Edom, and his God that he worship is 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 uh what's it? It's Satan, okay. So we're living in the last seconds of the last days, man. I'm gonna skip down in this article, uh, just a little bit. Because this article right here is off of a Christian Post uh, website, but uh, even their pastors, you know, a lot of the, a lot of some of the pastors, I ain't gonna say all of them, but uh, some of the pastors are starting to, you know, see that uh, even though the Christian Church is not right, the Christian Church is some is, is BS. But nevertheless, you do have some pastors out there seeing that you know there's something fishy going on in the air, you know, and this is what this particular. A Christian pastor had to say. Uh, I'm going to get to it. It says the Bible does tell us in Revelation 13 that there will be a time where a global economic system is digitized. Right. Because the only way that Revelation 13 and 16 can happen is there's a global economy that's digitized. That's the only way that that can happen. OK. Right. And this is what we're witnessing. The global economy being backed by digital currency, being digitized, right? And it says, and that all those who participate in the global economy would need to do so with what we would call a prefix, meaning a number that is in the in the head of an account, right? It's a prefix to the mark of the beast, the actual the microchip itself. Right. You need the system that's going to allow the, the, the payments. And then shortly after, you're going to have the implementation of this chip. And it's going to be introduced. It's going to be introduced to the to the masses of the people on a wide scale. Like the scripture says, he's going to cause all right. He's going to put you in a certain situation where you're going to feel like you like you need to take it. And the best way I could equate that situation is going to be just how COVID was. Just how that seed word was. When that outbreak happened, people felt like they needed to take the vax. They felt they 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 threatened you. They threatened that they was going to take your jobs away. Right. It's going to be a, a, a even harsher situation than that. OK. I'm going to skip down just a little bit. It says strictly from I'm going to start out here at this at this paragraph. It says strictly from a global security perspective, Hibbs, which is the name of the pastor, said such a system makes sense when it comes to promoting it as a means of eliminating human trafficking, drug smuggling, smuggling, uh, counterfeiting and other criminal networks. And this is what and this is what the elites of the society is going to push this system as this new way of payment. Ads. They're going to they're going to say that it's better for everybody. They're going to say that it's going to get rid of human sex trafficking. It's going to get it's going to get rid of human trafficking, period. They're going to say it's going to get rid of drug smuggling, counterfeiting and all, all, all the things that that's done under the table. They're going to say that this is going to get rid of it. And you're going to have a lot of people that fall for that illusion, for that deception. You're going to have a lot of people fall for it. All right. This is the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. You see, this is going to be a lying wonder to a lot of people. And you want to have those people, they're going to believe it. Okay. They're going to be believe that this is the solution. Okay. In reality, that this is idolatry against the Heavenly Father, God. Against Yahweh Shemiah 
This is going to be the ultimate form of idolatry. And if you take that mark, I'll tell you right now, if you take that mark, that is the end for you. A lot of the times, you know, uh, I, I watch these Christian pastors and see what they have to say about repentance against the mark of the beast. If you take it, a lot of them are stuck in the in the in the in the between line between yes or no. They don't know. They stuck between that line. But I, I'm telling you right now, through the understanding and power of Yahweh Hashem Shai, if you take that mark, there's no repenting from that. And the scripture that proves it right here is uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 9. And it says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, right? In his image, talking about the ideology of this world. Heard everything in this world is adverse to the heavenly father God and that image, right? If you worship that image, if you worship the beast, the image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his right hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath, right? You're going to drink of the wrath of the most high, which is poured out without mixture into a cup of his indignation, Right? And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, which is Yahweh Shai. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image and, whoever, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Right. So there's no repenting from take, taking the mark of the beast. This is why this prophecy right here is so serious. This is the ultimate form of idolatry if you take this. And this is being pushed. This is in the making right before our, our very eyes, man. And you have these major banks pairing up with the, the, the Federal Reserve to push it. So this lets you know that the coming of our Lord draweth nigh. And we're at the, not the last days, but the last seconds of the last days. All right. So with that, I hope you brothers out there was edified. I'd like to give all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh Bashem Amashiach Yahweh Shai, Bashem And like the scripture says, let us not walk in the darkness, but put on the armor of light. All right. Let us put on the armor of light that allows us to see and allows us to be awake in these dark and evil times. All right. So with that, I say Shalom.